Hey guys, and welcome to Smite Tactics Closed Beta. My name is Jagras, and I'm back once again with a patch over for you, for you guys. This time it is the CB 0.17 patch, When in Rome. And we've got a new pantheon, which, as you may have guessed from the title, is the Roman pantheon. So I want to give you guys an overview of the new cards, as well as my thoughts and feelings about that. In terms of other changes that have come with the patch, you can now actually deploy two copies of a god instead of one. So you can have like two Scardies, two Aphrodites out on the board at the same time, which will change the gameplay mechanics a little bit. Uh, I think it's quite an interesting change. We'll, we'll kind of see how it, how it affects the game. On top of that, you'll notice if I look at the collection that the leaders have increased health pools now. So they've, I guess, tried to draw out the game. Uh, Guan Yu, for example, he used to have 20. All the melee leaders used to have 20 health, now have 25. All the range leaders previously had 23 uh sorry 18 health now have 23 also we've got some new card art uh and they've kind of changed it for each pantheon so the card art is maybe more consistent across pantheons i preferred the previous card art but you know it's potatoes patatas like whatever whatever no one says patatas but you know whatever whatever you prefer is kind of personal preference and i can kind of understand why they made this change i still think they look a little bit rough around the edges like this kind of crinkled effect they're trying to do like who who has a crumpled card like, especially with the edges being so rigid and then the paper is, like, crumpled. I don't know. It's, it's not really to my tastes, but I just prefer the old ones. So, yeah, these are the uh, Chinese new card art. Then we have Egyptian. Got some Greek cards. We've got the Norse cards. We've got the neutral cards. And then we have the Roman cards. And you also see that the card deck builder has is, is got, you know, interface changes. But anyway, on to the Roman cards. So, Roman Pantheon is the newest card or deck added to, uh, uh, Tactics. We've got, as you can see here, uh, 19 cards in total, including the leader. So that's all of your cards there. Um, we'll go through them one at a time and we'll uh, we'll talk about them. A little personal gripe with this patch, by the way. So if I want to go to the next page, if I click this gap between the two arrows, nothing happens. You have to actually click on one of the arrows. This is this is dumb as hell. But anyway, personal personal gripe aside. So your leader is Bologna. She senses a battle approaching. Well, you know, that is that. To be honest, I don't really hope my enemies have skill. Like, it makes it easier to win. Anyway, give all friendlies you deploy this turn plus zero, plus two. So every unit you would deploy that turn gains plus two health. And that costs two mana, I believe, to use. So she pays two mana, and then every unit that you then summon gains two health. And that is kind of crazy, especially late game, you know. Late game, if you can basically increase the health of literally every unit, I feel like that's going to be hugely impactful. Um, the thing that I've kind of noticed about the Roman Pantheon, having quickly looked through the cards, is it looks like they've got a lot of kind of smaller value cards. You might have seen here, you know, look, we've got lots of ones and twos. If we go through here, threes, you know, there's not huge numbers of higher cost cards because I guess the idea is you use your Pantheon ability and then you start summoning units and then they start getting, getting really strong. But I feel like this can synergize with so many different situations, especially with gods like Hercules, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried about this ability, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I definitely think this could be a little bit of a worry. Anyway, on to, on to our collection. So we've got a mix of spells and units. Uh, Dishonorable. Deal two damage to all enemies who are not adjacent to other enemies. I, I think this could be useful, but how often are units spread out, you know? If I think about it, in, in this game, units aren't spread out that often. Uh, the one thing I do think it's good against is maybe like stealth units or units in bushes because often you leave a unit alone in a bush for example or in the back line so maybe with ranged units this could be good. Um, but I think for the most part you know players typically clump their units so then how how useful is Dishonorable? Well you know it does actually synergize I think with Ballista Tower. Holy crap some of these sound effects. Anyway choose a 2x2 two two area to attack. The tower deals one damage to this area at the start of each of your turns. So you could, what you could try and do is use the Ballista Tower, which is a 1-5, to spread out the units, then use Dishonorable to deal damage to them once they're spread out, for example. I really also like Ballista Tower because it stops people from, like, camping or, like, um, basically utilizing kind of narrow channels in the different maps or, like, safe spots kind of thing to to kind of to kind of lock down your units. And it makes positioning a bit more tricky because previously, for example, in the Norse maps, you have these stones and you can position your units between the stones and then basically block anything from going past. Whereas the Ballista Tower, I think, counters that quite nicely. Um, I think maybe a 2x2 two two area is a little strong for a 2 mana cost card with 5 health. You know, that's quite hard to kill. Uh, saying that, you know, you can't then retarget it. I think it just targets that area. Although maybe you can use it to target units. I haven't really played around with Roman, so if you can then also... Uh, you can also then attack with the tower. You know, I feel like that's a very strong unit. 
Speaking of strong units, we also have a legendary here. Mercenary. It is a charge unit. Warcry gain plus one, plus one for every other friendly adjacent to your leader. Bear in mind, you can have up to eight friendlies around your leader, and this guy costs one mana. So I feel like with the Roman Pantheon, it's one of these ones that you really have to stop from getting multiple units on the board. You have to kind of control them a little bit, because I feel like as they start to get more units on the board, they're going to kind of start to snowball a little bit. It's almost like you have an entire kind of army on the board. Uh, that's kind of what it feels like for me, the the kind of theme of the, the Pantheon is. Because you'll notice if you look at some of these other cards, you know, if adjacent to a friendly, gain plus one, plus zero. All friendly Romans gain movement and damage until the end of your turn. You know, there's a lot of cards uh, as we go on that have, you know, effects that trigger to adjacent friendlies, adjacent friendlies, adjacent friendlies. Like, I feel like this is just the adjacent friendly deck at this point. Um, so you're going to have to be very careful about them. And yeah, Mercenary Legendary, I, like, the fact that you can have one, only one, is, I think, fair. Because, you know, to be honest, if you if you could summon more than one of these, that would be kind of disgusting. Bear in mind that, you know, you also need a spot next to your leader to summon him. Um, so the maximum strength this can be is an 8-8 eight, eight with seven adjacents. I feel like, oh, it's only an 8-8 eight, eight for one mana. But then you, you do have to have a lot of leaders on the board. And at that point, you know, or units on the board, at that point, you've probably won anyway. So then part of me feels like this isn't that great of a Legendary card, simply because, you know... By the point at which you have a lot of cards to gain strength with him, like at, at the point at which you've got a lot of cards to gain strength with him, you know, you, you're probably already winning anyway. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, I mean, maybe using him with even three or four adjacents and getting a 5-5 five, five for one mana cost is pretty good. Uh, then we have Bulwark, give your leader guard until your next turn. So this basically turns your leader into a tank, which means any adjacent units can't be targeted. And I actually think you could probably use this, the Bulwark, in order to get units on the board uh, adjacents, and then on the next turn, one up your mercenary. So I feel like there's definitely synergy between Bulwark and Mercenary. Using Bulwark to use your leader to basically eat hits, effort. and then once you've done that, um, once you've done that, you know, you're pretty good. These hover effects where it, like, plays a sound effect are really annoying me. I don't know if I like this feature. It's kind of like, when, especially when I'm trying to talk to you guys about cards, it's just, like, kind of annoying, especially because you, you kind of naturally hover over cards anyway. And so constantly having, you know, sound effects happening is actually very annoying. I hope they I hope they do something about that. Anyway, demoralize. Reduce the attack of all enemies by two until your next turn. That's crazy. Two mana, reduce the attack of all enemies by two. And it's until your next turn. So it basically makes you safe for a turn. Because, like, you know, a lot of units don't have super high strength. You know, they have one or two damage. So then bringing it down to zero, uh, it means they're just not going to do any damage to you. So it basically just kind of, it's like a skip skip a turn, you know, kind of save time kind of thing. Um, so again, a really interesting card. And again, it could you could use it to uh, synergize with mercenary, get a lot of units out, and then get your mercenary out uh, and get a really strong unit on the board with charge. All friendly Romans gain plus two movement and plus one plus zero until the end of your next turn. So this, they all can move further and more damage. And again, two mana cost. I don't know. I feel like these cards that can affect lots of units, they become super valuable as soon as you get maybe two or three units on the board. And for their low mana cost, I, I just feel like it's a little bit unbalanced. Like, a lot of these cards are, are kind of scary, to be honest. Because, um, for example, then you have Thracian. If adjacent to a friendly, gain plus one, plus zero. So then she's already a two, three. Give her, you know, the... Uh, Give her the, the march, he becomes a 3-3. Three, three. The tower becomes a 2-5. Like, there's a lot of cheap units that become, you know, relatively potent for very small cost. Um, and that's something I'm definitely, you know, a little bit worried about. I mean, if you have the Bologna ability plus the mercenary plus the march, you know, that's still giving you a 2-3, a if, even if you have no adjacents, which you likely won't have. So then, and that guy's got charge. Like, you have to be very careful with how you balance these things, especially something like charge in a deck where you can also make everyone stronger uh, or healthier, I guess. Anyway, onwards, we have a census. If adjacent to a friendly attacks, hit all enemies, all adjacent enemies. So it then basically bash, bounces or splashes. This is a 3-3 three, three for three mana. So, you know, it's not a bad unit anyway. And I'm wondering if adjacent to a friendly can include your leader. Because if that includes your leader, that's kind of disgusting. Because you can basically keep your leader next to things. Your leader has 25 health pool, right? Uh, and then you've got a splash damage attack. And that's, that's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. Um, it's kind of like Bull Demon King um, with a with a condition. But, like, the thing with Bull Demon King, if we look at him, he's here in the neutral pool somewhere. Bull Demon King uh, is a 4-6 for 5 mana. This is a 3-3 three, three for 3 mana. So 3-3 three, three is decent anyway. The problem with Bull Demon King is by the time you get him out, by the time you get him on the board, you know, you're kind of into the mid to late game. So people have a lot of ways of dealing with him. But a 3 mana card, you can play on the second turn, right? So you can play... 
this card on the second turn, a census. And then if you can use your leader, I'm not entirely sure if you can, then you've got a splash damage unit on the second turn. And that allows you to control the board and then start to get out more adjacent friendlies, uh, such as the native, for example. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like this, this deck... I think they have to be very careful with Roman because they they feel like they could be very powerful. And this is with only 19 cards so far. Then we have armaments. Draw cards until you have the same number as your opponent. So this is one of the things I was going to say about Roman is that you need to be very careful with, to give them card draw. Because, you know, if they're getting all these bonus, bonuses for adjacent enemies and stuff, uh, what they're going to want to do is summon a bunch of cards in one turn. But it, the, the downside of playing a bunch of cards in one turn is that as you're only drawing one new card every turn, you soon run out of cards. Now, armaments, you draw up until you have the same number as your opponent. So if you're against, you know, maybe like a Chinese, not Chinese, sorry, an Egyptian deck or a, a Greek deck, which are often very draw heavy, armaments is actually a really nice run because then you can do that and like very safely draw multiple cards um, with, with with this one. And to be honest, so long as you can get more than, you know, two cards out of, out of this, like three mana for two cards, I don't think is a bad trade. So it's, if you can get to that stage where you're two cards lower, you know, this is pretty good. It's a risk though, because you know if you have you have more, if you have uh, more cards than them, this is a basically a dead card. But then I guess if you have more cards than them, you have card advantage anyway. So you know it's it's all good. Then we have promote gives plus zero plus two to all friendlies in target area. Uh, I don't know how big the target area is of this. Um, it's interesting. It's kind of like Bologna's ability, but instead of playing it before you play the units, you can play it after you play the units um, and make them all kind of healthier. I don't know. I feel like, you know, they have a lot of strong units anyway, so maybe promotes won't be as potent. But then giving units health is, I've always found, is very powerful in Smite Tactics. Um, especially with the fact that, you know, they've increased the health pool of all the leaders. That What that means is that games are going to go on a little bit longer. So then having, you know, healthier units generally is actually quite nice. It really depends how big the target area is in this. If it's a 2x2, two two, I think this is really insane. Uh, if it's a 1x2, it's decent. If it's a 1x1, one one, I don't think it will be. Otherwise, it would say give the target plus 2. Then uh, not great. Because, I mean... I run beads, I want to say it is. Is it beads? I think it's beads. It's a Greek card. Yeah, I run purification, which is a free plus two health, right? And I run this uh, because the, giving a unit plus two health for free is really good. Uh, and then the crowd control removal is a bonus. This one, on the other hand, is obviously a... Uh, it costs mana. It's a three cost. But depending on how many units you can give two health to, I, I think it could be quite good. Veneta. If adjacent to a friendly, Veneta takes no return damage. Uh, and again, I wonder if this triggers on Bologna. Because actually, I mean, 3-2, I actually don't think this card is amazing because two mana, or two health cards are usually very easy to remove. Like, two health units get removed very quickly. And so for three mana, you know, is that that useful? Whereas a 3-3, you know, he's likely to survive till the next turn and you're going to get the damage out. Uh, it's basically just a harpy, actually, now that I think about it. Because Elder Harpy is three mana, does not receive return damage, and doesn't have a requirement of being next to a, an adjacent and this card is not run because it's not seen as that great you know so this is a three two which neutral which does the same thing as this card venator but doesn't have a condition so i don't actually see when you would ever play venator like if you're gonna play venator you may as well play harpy and nobody plays harpy because it's not great so yeah not feeling it not feeling it uh then we have our good friend cupid warcry choose a non-leader enemy when cupid dies the target enemy will also die uh, so this kind of makes, reminds me of Last Breath, like targeted Last Breath. But on the flip side, you also get a 4-2 body on the, on the board. So it's Last Breath with a single target with a 4-2 body attached. Um, because you can kind of kill, get Cupid killed, suicide in, but you also get to deal 4 damage, and then you also kill the target. So, interesting mechanic. It's, it's kind of an interesting control strategy. Um, it's very nuanced, and I think it'll be good to see kind of what, what kind of comes of that. The only issue, obviously, is on the turn that you summon Cupid, you can't actually kill him, right? So the, the Warcry, you know, choose a non-leader enemy, that one dies when he dies. That's not gonna happen until the next turn, so you'll still have to like, deal with that unit for an entire turn. But, you know, if you can then also give your, uh, your, you know, play that card that removes damage, for example, maybe play the, uh, maybe play the, uh, Dishonorable, for example. Oh my god, these sound effects. Maybe play Dishonorable, for example. Uh, not Dishonorable, sorry. Demoralize. Then, you know, I think there's some, like, synergy there with Cupid, for example. Next up, we have Gallus. All adjacent friendlies have immune enemy spells. This is insane. Immune enemy spells is really, really strong. It's what Nike has in, or Nike has in Greek, and it's really, really strong. Um, giving this, basically, to all adjacents, I feel like is crazy and with six health attached 
For me, that feels like a little bit overtuned because six health is very hard to deal with unless you have, you know, executes in, for example, or or very high damage units on the board. Like a one six with with immune to uh, enemy spells. Ah, huh. I think it's a little bit overtuned for the mana cost. I would have preferred to see a one five or a one four personally. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Or you know, maybe a five mana cost. Um, Gallus, I think is is a very strong card, and I imagine it will see a lot of play. Gladiator, your leader ability costs one less until, or while this unit is in play, this does not stack. So I'm I'm really happy this doesn't stack, because if you could have two gladiators on the board, what that would do is make Bologna's ability to give anything that you play uh, plus two health free. As it is, you get plus two health for one mana for as long as gladiator is on the board, um, which is insane. Like, really, really strong. Um... And a 4-4 body too, so yeah, I think that's another good card. Having, you know, cheaper health, then you kind of start to build up your army, I feel, with Rome, right? You know, you're adding you're adding health to your units, so then they're more survivable, and then they, you're buffing adjacent units, and then suddenly, you know, Roman gets out of control, and they have, like, a very, very strong army of units on the, on the board, which they start to march towards you, and maybe you can't dodge because the Ballista Tower is in the way. The Ballista Tower is sitting there, you know, guarding one side so you can't retreat that way. Then the Mercenary pops out, and he, he suddenly got, like, you know, 8-8 eight, eight for 1 strength with charge. Um, so yeah, interesting. Then we've got Enlist. Deal 3 damage to a non-leader enemy and spawn a Venator. So, 3 damage, 5 mana with a Harpy attached. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. Like, a Fire Imp. Fire Imp got nerfed. They cost 2 mana now. Is Fire Imp is 2 mana for 2 damage. And then you have 3 mana to play something else. I feel like this is too expensive for what it does. Like, three damage isn't enough for dealing with cards, and then the Venator, you know, isn't that much of a problem. So I'm, I'm not really rating Enlist, personally. Okay, then things get interesting. Hercules gains plus one attack every time he is damaged. Bologna, give plus two health to a unit before you play it. So at seven mana, you can play a ten health Hercules. Every time he is damaged, he gets stronger. Oh my god. God. And then, and then what we'll do on the next turn is we'll, we'll plonk down Gallus next to him so that he actually can't, uh, so that he can't be targeted by spells, you know, just to make life fair. Or, or we just summon a 2A and plonk down Gallus next to him. Nine mana and then, uh, you know, have fun with that. Uh, this, this is a very, I think it's a very strong card. I think the, the 2A, you know, it's not that great, but if he does one damage to him, suddenly he's a, you know, a 3-7. One more damage, suddenly he's a 4 uh, four six, for example. This is definitely someone you're gonna have to take down, but you're gonna have to take them take them down in big hits. You can't use a lot of small minions. Uh, I guess otherwise you use range. But I feel like Hercules has a lot of potential to be a big problem, and it's definitely one of the cards you wanna focus down and get rid of. Sagittarius Warcry spawn a random Roman minion with cost three or less. So you get a two three body for five mana, not great deal. And then on top of that, you can have Veneta. A census, Thracian, or Ballist Ballista Tower. So you got a choice of four at the moment. I mean, mm, I'm not really, I'm not really sold because the thing is, like, all of these you can get for two mana anyway. So like, and then you can target draw most of them, like two or three mana. This is five mana for a two three, and an, like it's basically five mana for like two two threes or a two three and a three three. Like, meh. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think it's it's uh it's super great. Uh, I don't know if it's ranged. I don't I don't think so. Normally ranged units, they say ranged on them. I guess these are all melee units. This is interesting. Let's have a let's have a quick peek just to make sure that this hasn't been changed. Uh let's find something that's meant to be ranged. Oh no! Oh oh I see. It's got like an arrow through the icon now. Okay, that's that's how it is. So which of these are ranged then? We never talked about that. The Ballista Tower is obviously ranged. The Venator is ranged. Okay, that makes Venator a little bit better than I said. Because I didn't realize it was a range. A range 3 2 is okay, but again, they're still quite easily clearable. Cupid is obviously ranged. And th that does, I guess, make enlist, enlist a little better as well. We'll see. I still, I still, I'm not convinced. Okay. And then Sagittarius is also ranged. So it's a 2 3 ranged. I, I don't know. I don't like random spawning. I feel like it, you're, you're kind of putting too much faith in Lady Luck when really you should have a strong deck anyway. So we'll see. We'll see. And then last but not least, we have Terra. Warcry, select a row, deal two damage, and stun all enemies on that row at the start of your next turn. So again, this actually gives you a lot of control. This is a 6-6 six, six unit for six mana, so she's got really nice stats anyway. But combined with the Ballista Tower, you can kind of control 
more or less where your enemy has to spawn their units and where they have to stand. Uh, which means that even though, you know, this deck or this Pantheon is fairly melee heavy, heavy, heavy in terms of their units, um, I think they have a lot of control. And I think as a, as a kind of base theme, you know, Roman looks really interesting and I can't wait to play it. Um... I mean, what do you guys think? Is there anything that you said I've said that you agree with? Anything that I disagree with? Have I missed any kind of glaringly obvious synergies? That does happen sometimes. Uh, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, more or less, I'm. I think for the most part, these these cards either feel really strong or really weak. Like there doesn't seem to be very many kind of average cards by the looks of things in this pantheon. Whereas I feel like in other pantheons, there's more cards that are like they're they're good, but they're not you know crazy overpowered. Um, so they'll still see play, but they won't be kind of completely game changing. Whereas with Roman. Maybe a little bit overtuned. Some of the cards, you know, not that exciting. But nothing really in between. Venator is definitely one we're going to have to wait and see. I think, like, three damage on a range unit is better than a Harpy because, you know, they'll kill it and take three return damage. But there's still lots of ways to deal two damage, you know, with spells and stuff. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's maybe better options, um, potentially in the neutral pool, for example. If you've got three mana, you know, you could get a three, four. You could get... Uh, what else could you get? Uh, a 2-4 melee. These are all melee, though. Uh, you can get Sign of Doom for 2 mana, to be honest. That's that's kind of really strong. So, yeah. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I'll have a link to the patch notes with all of the balance changes as well. So, if you want to see, you know, everything in writing, we'll have that down. And we'll have a beginner Roman deck coming up on the channel in uh, the next week at some point. So, keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. And hopefully, I'll catch you guys next time uh if you want to catch me playing smite tactics live i've got a twitch twitch.tv plus slash jagris and you can find me on twitter at jagris thanks for watching have a fantastic day and i will catch you guys next time bye